global, the way global web worked was that we were actually at that point picking up streams from all over the world or from our quest mm -hmm. and putting them in a central place trying to create like a coherent TV channel to present it and give narrative and give context. And there was a fair number of us working, I mean, by March, February, by the time we reorganized in a decentralized fashion, there was like 25 of us all over the world trying to feed stuff in and working together, sitting in this chat room, running the channel from the chat room, we were set up and so on. And but we, we kept encountering the same problem every single day. We were very tired all the time because we're constantly in the real time regime, picking up new stories and so on. And we were constantly chasing around and couldn't get context about this particular situation. We couldn't read, we could, we could take the stream and put it there, but we couldn't fully explain it. We, or if we even could fully explain it in terms of facts, it was hard for us to make it more human because we didn't have, even if we had a, a lot of information, we didn't have enough. So how do we fight against that? How do we deal with this problem? The way we deal with the problem is we started training streamers by just calling them, texting them, sending them emails or whatever, how to narrate the stuff themselves. And streamers started improving better and better and better. If you look at a typical live streamer who's streaming for the movement now, they're amazing narrators mm -hmm. in the do the stuff, right? Yeah. But still, some stuff is missing, especially when you look at uh, something like recently, for example, I Don't Know More campaign that started in, uh, in Canada and spread pretty quickly to the United States where they're trying to block the tar sands uh, a nature exploitation project where, and complete suppression of all the Indian rights issues and so on. Again, it was very decentralized, it was happening everywhere. And again, it was extremely hard to be covering it to connect all the pieces of the story. So the problem was the people who were actually organizing these things, the people who were actually organizing the ground, the thinkers who were thinking this stuff through, they were not talking to the journalists to organize the actions, but they had no direct way to talk to the journalists who were trying to cover it. So we started building tools how to combine the whole thing together so people can start really creating media in real time, mm -hmm. but not just focused on capturing the stream, but actually like, imagine you had a real time press kit, the journalist, that had all the live streams that happened, context, and then whoever wanted to go and add, like let's say, philosophical context or economical context and so on, we just insert it for the journalist to insert it into the coverage. Okay. So that your coverage is no longer just what happened, mm -hmm. but also why and how, and, and what the alternatives are, which is the most important thing, because one of the most important things that our movement has faced over and over again over the last year, as we, we kept getting beaten down by the police, as we kept getting evicted from our centers, it was extremely hard for us to, uh, to formulate to the world at large what the alternative to this corrupt system is. Because if you're too busy getting beaten and what's on the screen is just violence and police repression or whatever, you don't really have a chance to talk about that there is, there is another way. So anyway, so this is basically what we're about. So we put we So again, you guys can come over. Basically, it's not because what we did is not one idea, it's many ideas combining together. It's not like driven by one person, but many people. And the most okay, so the most important thing is some of the observations we played with. That this is how I wonder if you can read this. But, um, but basically, the whole idea is that we, we're introducing an idea that there is such thing as a group conscious, mass conscious. So we try to represent, in the beginning of Occupy, we try to represent that the idea of this mass and group conscious, the group intelligence, through the general assembly. But it doesn't have to be just the general assembly. It could just be through an iterative process of discussing things and learning and, and interacting ideas and so on. So if you create some of those things. So the, the whole idea is that the social movement actually we had camps, the camps were two types of camps. Right? Occupy and we had 15 but they were pretty much the same movement. And the whole idea of mass conscious combined with all the technologies and ideas going forward creates this collaboration, the start of the collaborative co culture that we call. So in some ways, if now if we analyze how we operated technically, how, what that meant technically, was that you basically had the squares which fed into the media cent centers which, we connect, which made, we made us citizen journalists. This is how we did it in the camps. And then that, that created the creation of the narrative or whatever. So we needed to create a kind of a structure outside of the squares, because we could no longer use the squares. So we were in a situation suddenly after November that if we try to occupy any park to do actually any kind of work besides just sitting there, we would get attacked. So we were in the position where we couldn't really use the square, we couldn't really use this very efficient structure that worked with OWS. Because if, if you went to OWS in the first like, three, four weeks of OWS, and you showed up, the middle of OWS was in the middle of the party mm -hmm. was the media center. And what was that media center? You go in, you plug in your laptop, because there was a generator, 
and you can start working on stories, people bring you information, since you understand that all the information that was necessary was coming into the center, you could process it, and then you're working together how to tell the story and how to put it out. And it was a very powerful machine that was able to create a, you know, a jackhammer of, of consciousness into the society at large. So how do you create that? But we don't have the square anymore, so we can't bring people together, so you can't find a place where you go and submit all this information. You don't have a place where you sit, sit there and information comes to you, you just need to arrange it. It just doesn't exist. It took that away from us. So how do we deal with it? We started talking about how to do it in the, in, 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 in the, in the cloud. So one of the ways to talk about it was that we started talking about the virtual media center. And this is basically the graphic what I just described. The information is coming in and it's pushing the stuff out. So we started, we need to create the stuff online. So then we started dealing with all, all kinds of other questions that started coming up as we started thinking about it. This is basically information that goes mm -hmm. in and out of the camps and out of the camps and creates a physical media center. Physical. physical. This is written okay. by a Spanish person. That's this cool. I just wanted to make sure it was physical versus physical. physical. But she, thank you. She's Spanish. My wife is Spanish. This is her version uh, of physical. Okay. Any, anyway, um, <laughs> she, spelling is never her forte. So, one, so one of the things we started dealing with is security. Well, one of the things we have to deal with. So the, for the participants in this online media center, you don't <coughs> want every participant worldwide to be known to the government. Because then you just eliminate the network. It's not a smart idea. However, certain ideals and ideas that we have that came out of Occupy, such as transparency, and so on, so on, so on, are actually very important. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the typical anonymous, like, so we'll, we'll, for example, we're studying how anonymous are organized, or organize themselves. It's very important to, to understand, because it is a very effective efficient uh, collective that has done quite a lot of interesting work and they are working so they don't know who the other person is and so what do we learn from them they do keep the same identity the identity is just not connected to who they actually are right now mind you we're not doing what anonymous is doing we're actually not going at least in the united states and breaking the laws which are passed right trying to get information well we don't break we don't hack to get the information right. we're actually not breaking what the united states however in places like spain mm -hmm. We're advocating a for a demonstration is a crime. We're not really any different from anonymous. Right. Well, so we started figuring out that we started realizing that we have to ad adopt the same methods of, of interaction as anonymous does. Because if we become effective even here, really effective, they will outlaw our activity as well. So we need to create a system that even if you outlaw it, the people who are involved are protected, even if what they're doing right now is completely legal. So I'm going to start sh show you the okay. So this is the whole thing. The centralized media. We created a thing called Occupy the Commons. Now, Occupy the Commons is a website where people can collaborate now. The idea behind it is that the reason we chose such a shitty name was on purpose. It's we do not believe that institutions need to be made. So if you create something that becomes an institution, the people are gonna fight to control that institution. In the process of fighting for controlling that institution, the institution will lose its, its identity, will, will, will lose its focus, it will, will no longer be about creation of media. It will be internal battles who controls the website. Mm -hmm. So what we're creating with our, in Occupy the Commons is basically a template of methods mm -hmm. of how people can work together, and we're just going to get to those in a second. And those methods, it, you can basically create your own Occupy the Commons equivalent just by following the recipe that we're publishing. As we're making every single piece, we publish how we did it. Oh. It's all open source. So nothing stops anybody from going and building their own. And it doesn't, you don't need a million dollars to build your own. You can rent a virtual server for, for thirty dollars a month, mm -hmm. and, you, and you can you, you have enough computing power to support up to like a hundred people working together like that. So it's not you know what I'm saying. So it's not like you need a huge amount of resources to actually do it. We are spending a fair amount of resources because we're trying to build. And a lot of it is not even on yet; it's being tested. But we build the communication systems, for example, where people are chatting with their fake identities or whatever, but they're completely decentralized, where the servers exist in many many countries at once. So if, if Hardware is actually seized, the communication network keeps going. Mm. Right. So at the, at the very core of what we're doing, so here's the idea. We take real-time information and we create open groups where people can crowdsource, contribute information. What's a group in, the, in this context? It's an action. If an action, like if you join a group, you're joining the media group for that action, working on collecting information, analyzing it, and then working on put it, putting it out. The publishing platform is not the conference. The conference is just it's a work platform. You still need to publish your work on wherever you're going to publish it on. So if you're working with whatever blog, if you're working, if you want to publish on OccupyWallStreet.org, if you want to pu publish on whatever, that's where you're going to publish. You're not publishing for comms. The comms is, also, is to create basically a neutral space for people to gather all the information and organize it. 
so they can actually write so the idea is so that like, let's say a video editor comes in and he lives let's say in California or she and they cannot then an action is happening like I don't know more for example actions are happening all over the country right so if they come in and they have to look all the footage that was shot it would take them two years or, two, or at least five days to produce a piece a person coming in who wants to write an article about I don't know more this is for the decentralized action has to cover so much material, has to look in so many different places, becomes impossible. So the whole idea is to use crowdsourcing, basically, ha using Akron, submit this information, and we developed a lot of tools which automatically grab a lot of this information online, automatically. Mm -hmm. So everything on Twitter, every video on Twitter, every video on YouTube that gets tagged, let's say, with whatever hashtag is, gets automatically pulled into this virtual media center to be analyzed by whatever journalists want to use it. So, I'm going to just jump to the presentation, I'm going to show you the actual site and how to, to use it. Trying to completely democratize the information. What that means is that your participation is not derived from your position anywhere. Your participation to either contribute information or to write and publish is completely not connected whether you have a job somewhere, where you're connected to some group or whatever. It's completely equal and open. Because people, the only, the only thing, is that, as you will see, the only thing that will determine is if you submit something that's false, the identity you're using, people will eventually stop trusting it. So it's basically also, as this thing develops, will allow us to create a system of mutual trust that some people who are always contributing <coughs> interesting information are always organizing will be trusted more. <coughs> and keep in mind that the identity is not, not necessarily going to be your name. It's going to be your handle mm -hmm. on whatever website. So for example, when we're teaching people to live stream now in Spain, this is what we teach them. They make a new Twitter account. We gave them, a, for example, we give them a new email address at one of the movement servers. Using that email address, they make, with the same email name, they make a Twitter account and they make all the channels. They have user, user, whatever. So from that point on, they exist as that handle that for the purposes of that work. And this is how we want to propagate all of the, all of the media as, as it goes forward. We, because you want to have a combination of anonymity so that people are not arrested, caught, and harassed. But you also want to create a record, so to speak, that people can establish trust to what you say. Because if everyone is completely anonymous to the point where they're just like random characters, you will never be no, you will never know which information you can trust and which you can't as you're trying to put these stories together. And we will see people trying to undermine these systems by going in and submitting false information. So as we're basically developing this, this is like a big experiment. We're basically figuring out how to deal with the general issue of trolling. And trolling can happen in many ways. Trolling can someone come in and try to like deface the website, but it could also be more insidious. Trolling could consist of trying to go in and divide people by, by being smart about it. But trolling could consist also for projects like this to go in and con purposely contribute false information to try to uh, discredit the projects. So people who use it are publishing more information, blah, 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 blah. So there seems to be a fact-checked element built in. There has, well, it has, the people themselves have <coughs> to fact-check, and a lot of it is going to be Dating. on whether you trust the people you're working with. At least based on what they've done before. So anyway, um, so this is more about the sharing. So yeah, this is the same thing. This is something that's very important, especially particular to OWS and a lot of the debates we're having now about control of the message. Within Occupy, for those of you who are actually looking at different follow with mailing lists, there are a lot of concerns that a few individuals are controlling all of the main accounts related to social media. And it's an ongoing concern that's been happening now since probably the very beginning of OWS, but at least within OWS has now reached a very, very high level. It was to a point where one of the main people who's involved in Twitter had his account ha tagged the other day because someone decided to demonstrate how bad it was, and suddenly every single movement account was tweeting that Occupy was over. So that was like a big wake-up call. So, th so a lot of what we're doing here is about decentralizing that power. Mm -hmm. So the most important thing now, so we're talking about, okay, the three steps. You develop the message, you, there's three steps. You, you organize the information, you create the narrative, so to speak, and then you diffuse it. So I'll explain briefly how you gather information. Real-time tools combined with crowdsourced contribution, the link, videos, whatever. The second is how you write the narrative. This is where it gets interesting. The site or the tool that we built, it does nothing unless people actually come in and start using it. What needs to happen is we need people like writers and people who can, who can, who can really write well, who can come in and look at a lot of this information coming in and start creating narratives out of it, actually starting creating good stories about it. So that's what you're creating what we would call it potentially viralizable narrative, a, a narrative that can actually be made to go viral. And the third part is diffusion. 
And our proposal for diffusion is actually creating large diffusion networks which take the stuff produced by the people and then push it to whatever social media they want to push it to. So we can basically get people to coordinate in Twitter campaigns and Facebook campaigns, co coordinate and take an article and publish it at the same time in 50 blogs and push that. And we've done experiments with that. For example, during the Slovenian revolution earlier this year, the group in Slovenia was using the system and put together a pretty good English written story of how the Slovenian revolution started. There was a huge revolution against corruption there. It exploded at the end of December. Mm -hmm. And then once the article was ready, and when a bunch of people worked on it, we would basically went and put it on pretty much every single movement website in one day. Boom. And suddenly it was everywhere. And then, so yeah, so then th that particular narrative went into the popular culture. A lot of people actually are aware that there is a Slovenian revolution. Slovenia is a tiny country of two million people, by the way, just so you have an mm -hmm. idea. So it wasn't exactly like the biggest thing on New York Times, like front page. Um, <clears throat> So yeah, this is based, okay, the tools that we're using, this is very important. Now, this, we're gonna talk about the tools. One of the primary tools that we found that's super useful is a very simple pad. So pad is a new, relatively new technology that people started using a lot. It's a document that everyone can edit at the same time, but it keeps history of every single edit. So you can actually go on the timeline and see every single version of the document. And I'm gonna show a few of these uh, examples of how we do this in a second. Another thing we set up is we set up these bots, basically. And what the bots do is they basically very used to program tools that pull stuff from the internet and report to you in real time. So they will give you, a bot give you a program, for example, to report to you like Twitter activity on particular hashtags related to, let's say, a perfect example, monitoring when live streams go live or not. You know you have six live streamers in the area covering an action. If you're gonna monitor physically when they go live or not, it's a nightmare, it's to keep refresh all the time, mm -hmm. so much manual work. But if you have a bot that automatically does this, a computer that keeps not, and it automatically sends you everyone a message, this guy just went live, this guy just stopped being live, da 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 da, it simplifies the whole process. So using basically this automation technology to automate the mechanical stuff we do in keeping track of media. So you don't have to keep refresh, you don't have to keep typing in the same search strings and so on, so on, so on. It's all about getting the computer to consolidate this information. Side check, but this is gonna wake you up because it's gonna be like, that's a fascinating story, right? Yeah. So we launched the, this tool in, the, in September, right after, right after September 17th, the first time we tried to launch it. So we're just it, and like whatever, we're doing it, and general strike starts in Europe, and that's when it was really heavily used, mm -hmm. first time. So suddenly the people who run aquapi.org website, and also run the London, uh, London LSX live stream, they notice us. And they start thinking about some kind of a competitor to the social net they wanna build for the movement. So they start spreading all kinds of rumors about it. They were trying to centralize power, they were trying to centralize information. I mean, given all the stuff I just described to you, we're actually trying to do the opposite. We're trying to make every single person be completely decentralized. So we're like, what the hell is going on? So people in the collective started to try to go over there, not physically, but virtually to their whatever chat room, mm -hmm. to explain where it was stands. Kind of we started watching how they operate. Right. And they were operating by the book. There's a whole book how you try to destroy someone's reputation on, in an online conversation. If they confront you with something, you jump away, whatever. They were following the thing. So we started getting really worried, right? Like, st concerned, like, what the hell is going on there? So then, as this thing continued, they started doing denial of service attacks on our personal computers. The second would go to their server. So if we went to Akupi, they would do denial to stop us from broadcasting on Global Rev, because their whole point was to attack Global Rev. And then they started basically setting in chatters, fake chatters, into the chat room of Global Rev creating all kinds of mess, to the point where like, one of the girls in London just quit because she just got a nervous breakdown because she was called like horrible oh, names. Yeah, and that's that. <laughs> no, 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 this was going on. So anyway, so what was going on? So we started really investigating. So we, then we started calling, I started like, you know, I have a, a list of people like, I, I know everybody who was in the beginning in the camps mm -hmm. because we were the ones who were giving them support and getting their media stuff set up and so on. So I started calling all these people. Mm -hmm. And then we started finding out some crazy stuff about the people at that org. But this guy, you cannot, another guy called Top, I think, that, that's what we know about these people. This is what you living in this virtual world. You don't know who they are. They spent a lot of time, they were there from the beginning, and all they were doing was dividing the online community from the, from the camps. So they were basically destabilizing from the beginning, and basically there were, like, there were four or five, five. They were doing Occupy London people that we actually know from the beginning uh -huh. said, we're convinced that these guys are cops. All right. We're you convinced. What? Well, they try to divide, right? Disrupt but the, the problem with, with occupy.org is that they're setting themselves up as actual real social net of the movement. So they have, this way they have, they know who is talking to whom, who is connected to what, and so on, so on, so on. So which is why when you guys started setting up 
I was like, wow, set it up on Google. Because Google might be evil, but at least I think it's better. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's maybe just a waste of time. Maybe it doesn't matter if it's a good starting place. But maybe it's a better starting place than alcopy.org because of all these issues. Oh, it's so buggy, man. The Google, exactly. The Google. Ask for information. Google is, you know, right. So, okay, so with all this stuff. So, the basic fundamental element of how we work with comms is this thing called the like the pad. And the pad is a document that everyone can edit at the same time. Yeah. It's very useful. So it, it's vulnerable. So anyone can come in and attack it, basically, and try to replace stuff on it. It's a super open system. It's such a super vulnerable to being attacked. But we still use it because it has a history. Thing. So you can always go back a few, a few minutes. You, you, you can press play on it. It will tell you how it was edited over time. So you can always extract information. Can someone spam 24 pages instantaneously about my dog has fleas. And they've done that and they actually have found, okay, yeah. They were able, to, when, it was actually Fair very enough. funny. We were using one of these pads to hold the debates on the principles of equality on the Google Web channel with everyone watching and contributing. This is how we're staging the debate. We're experimenting on how to organize highly participating discussions with people uh, because everyone can't speak at the same time. And if you work with actual chats, it's just one sentences, it's in many people talking at the same time. Again, very hard to keep track of what's oh, being yeah. said in the chat. So it's a solution to the pad because everyone is editing different paragraphs, right? So we're working on that. So that avoids, they, I, we think it was occupied, it was occupied with LSX people. So they've actually made a tool that overall the pad 30,000 times in like two minutes. Yeah. And they've been able to erase the pad. The occupy.org people again? We think it was them, yeah. Okay, not sure. We, we have no, you can't, you, you never know. But they were the ones who like all over it. And okay. They, and so we figured that out. So we figured out a way to get around it, which basically involves creating a backup of the actual pad as a separate file mm -hmm. every 30 seconds, which is what we do now. So during meetings, that's what, so yeah, so the whole comp system is basically battle hard. All of the, it's the same tools we use at Node, like Node that occupy the comps.cc is the same nodes, the same program almost, as what runs on nodes that occupy that net. So there's only one difference. Because we've been attacked, we have to deal with it. We have a switch now. If we turn the switch on a particular pad, a copy gets, of it gets made every 30 seconds as a separate file. So even if they actually execute this attack, mm -hmm. and it's an attack, you can't physically write something 30,000 times in two minutes. They have multiple computers executing the same, connecting this website and executing the same function over and over again to actually create. But the computer creates duplicates, which are just get stored separately and that's right. it. So and yeah, no, so no that's exactly, no, but the, which is the benefit of developing your own media infrastructure, because then you can respond <coughs> to these issues quicker than if you were actually like, dependent on someone else to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, at the same time, media people are not great programmers, and we're not great programmers. So it's better to start off with something that's already really good, and then keep working with it as opposed to really create it from scratch, which is pretty much the philosophy we have for comms, because we're just grabbing things, the best things that exist in the open source world, and pulling them together. And basically creating a manual on how to use it. And for now, because we decided to grow, we actually have, we can plug in more people. And to really make this work, we need to create a build a critical mass of people who actually use the site to make media. Because then once there's a critical mass of people, you were complaining when you're looking at some of it, it's like, well, all this stuff is not organized. Well, of course it's not organized yet. Well, at least we're pulling it in. It needs to be organized by the people who are active in the actions, who are actually organizing these actions. Because you have a situation that's 300 people in the streets and 500 people in the street doing the action. It shouldn't be that hard. And there's also another 100 people watching the live streams, actually, if you add it all up. It might not sound like a lot of people, but even if five of them just organize all that information in a pad, you need to have a map of how to edit your video. Right? So this is, that's, that's the basic, that's the fundamental right, so idea. This, this would allow us to actually expand beyond streaming, having stuff just fly by for the night, and go to the next action tomorrow, which is basically the modus operandi now. You do an action, tomorrow it's gone, and you, if you, you might have released something, maybe not, and, and, but there's no continuity, there's no depth in, in the way we cover things yet. Well, no, the people like, I, like he, for example, he, like Attic was working on the, the Brooklyn uh, Public Access TV show about the stuff. So what they focused to create 30 minutes. Is it 30 minutes? Um, well, yeah. It was, it was a, an hour. basically a 28-minute show. 20, th 30 Typical minutes. news story would be four minutes long, and so very much it was about Everything. condensing the stories, finding the key well, exactly. moments. Right, right. right. So we're talking about yeah, here. Yeah, so what you're doing 
but like the ideal, you would be like the client of the occupied thing. You'd be going to occupy the comms, grabbing the information from there, and making your stories from it. But, all that, but with a lot of the work already having been done for you, that's, yeah. that's the idea. Whereas the people who are doing action, the people who are doing streaming, whatever, they would actually make sure that the links are properly organized in there. to whatever, 903, okay? So, a lot of the day, Facebook likes to publish information, whatever. Um, for example, this is, a, we created a pad, for example, I don't know what happened, you know, a few days ago, application of principles to harassment problems, because the, the, the global rep chat room, which is completely open to people who watch the channel, is full of people who are harassing people with like, you know, if they, if they identify that you're gay, they will use gay slurs. If you, if you identify that you're a woman, they will try to target you as a woman. Yeah, what? So the question is how do we, like, and we, the way that chat room works, it's a virtual square in a way, right? Yeah. So well, how do you enforce the rules, right? So we're trying to have debates on, on that, and blah, blah, blah. Just, just, that's actually a pad, but I'm actually going to take it to the actual group. Uh, another one was set up, for example, after that Twitter account got hacked, we set up a pad to, to suggest ideas mm -hmm. on how do people should manage account securities for Twitter accounts and stuff like that. So in the, in the process, as you put people edit those paths, we're creating a database of knowledge, of how to deal with all kinds of issues and ideas and so on. But I'm gonna go to actual action group. So up here, you don't see it, but you look at groups. If you look at groups, so I don't know why you can't register, and why it's freaking out on you. Uh, I don't know, I'll just try something. You try another browser? Yeah, I'm doing it on Firefox. Thank you. All right, right. In the beginning, it's an alphabetical list of groups. It's basically all the different groups that were created. Uh, some of them are older, so you see a lot of Spanish groups. But for example, uh, and you can see some of these, the reason this group has so many members is because it was being featured during the big protest in Spain during 25S. So it was like the mingle when everyone was joining in. But we had no instructions, no nothing. So people were looking at the stuff, but there would be like 200 people inside the pads and two people writing. So we were like, okay, we have to start training people. So we actually wrote a protocol. If you go to the protocol up here, it's basically the instruction manual on how the media, how people can participate in media. It's on the top of the board, it's, uh, it's basically active and collaborative media methods. It basically describes a lot of the stuff in, in the presentation I'm explaining, and it explains the whole workflow of how you can work. Anyway, go back to the groups. I'm gonna pick a group that's actually relevant right now, which would be, or well, you can look at the newest group, and that gives you a good. Okay, so Maria Sonata, for example, is a good example. It's a very simple group that was created. Um, background. In Spain right now, uh, there's a huge push to unite the movement. And the movement right now is not necessarily disunited, but what's been going on for the last six months is that the doctors were organizing all over the hospitals to stop privatization of hospitals. The students and professors were organizing all over the universities, and actually high schools too, so I'm not just saying, not just professors, but teachers, mm -hmm. organizing in schools and universities to try to figure out how to do huge cuts to do to the educational system. Because what's happening in Spain right now is a basically in, industrial scale de deconstruction of what we'll call a, 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 a humane society. We're trying to do away with healthcare, we're trying to do with education, we're basically trying to bring the, the country into the Stone Ages, right? Austerity and the people. Yeah, it's austerity, but it's magnified. It's, like yeah. it's austerity the way we, we can't even imagine. Lead you dry. Because you have an austerity with like with 30, 40 percent unemployment, and it's just it's 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 an interesting animal of how it works. So people are mobilizing and organizing it. So now we're trying to bring people together, basically, to, and there's a big action. So the way we did this is an action description. That the first thing on there, okay, there's the first pad. There's the main collaborative pad. This is where people <coughs> submitted. There's a campaign going on. So this is where they start submitting all the images. Mm. For the logos, for example, because we'll have to go to all parts of the logo. For example, I just took this probably the, this is one of the logo proposals for the campaign, right? For example. Uh, and you, and you, the whole thing about the pad is so important is you can edit in it. Anyone who logs in can start typing in it. Right. And it's immediately seen by everyone else. And if you click on these buttons here, so my monitor is smaller than if you actually look in the bigger monitor. This, these buttons up here are gonna blow up. This tells how many people are looking at it at any given time. I don't really mean. This allows you, I think, to share it. Yeah, you can just pass this pad directly to somebody else without even this page. 
or you can open it separately. If you want to just open this wig somewhere, you can edit it, whatever, and stuff like that. And the most important thing about people to do when they use the bath is save it. You can do this part too. So this just says, so then, save a version. I will get to the versions in a second. Okay, this is, this is the part that allows you to do, Fuck. But this is the part that allows you to do playback. It's not working. I don't know why. Like playback. How it was edited. Of what everyone did. Of everyone did. It's, 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 uh, so if, okay, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll take it forever to load. If I go back here, <coughs> when you first open that, it says you pass it successfully. That's the message you get. If you press play, now I'm listening. And it starts writing. And you see Nikki was editing that pad. So this particular pad is not the actual pad that the working group that was having a meeting was using because we were worried about being trolled because a lot of people try to attack the whole unit thing. So this is a copy of another pad, but then people started using it for real. Because there's about three people using it and so on and so on. So on. You, can see, you, can see, you can see the process. And if you scroll down, obviously you only see a small part of it. You see other, other things being edited as the pad evolves. So this is how pad works. The button I was looking for is not this one because it's not showing the, in that view because the monitor it's not show, it's not blowing up the buttons full size so you can see what they are. So come on, you So this is how you take snapshots of it yourself. We just automated that process to make sure it doesn't just like the point. And we don't have it on all the time because all the time we're gonna we're gonna I'm busy and fuzzy, I'm gonna find anything. That's it's literally when assembly is going on, people are editing this thing. Okay, so we have this guardian, we call the guardian, it guards the pad. It takes a copy of the pad every 30 seconds. Many people have copies of it. And well, people can take copies of it on their own, but yes. we had situations where, like, okay, like, it's still it's still disruptive if someone does this. It just can disrupt the meaning. So you, you want to be able to, because we, we can pull it, put the pad back in and just press the button. That's the whole thing. It's not just looking for it. Mm -hmm. the files, whatever. Anyway, so this, so this is how you basically use the pad. It's, it's super important. This can allow you. Now, I'm going to talk about it in a minute. I'm going to talk about it. What we did, for example, this is where, where you, uh, this is relevant for the kind of stuff you did. For a given action, we'll list all the use stream actual works to the videos and what's in them. And we'll ask someone who's supporting the media effort to do it. So basically, there's an action. Some people are mixing the video, some people are doing tweeting, whatever, whatever, whatever. Someone could go, or, let's say, monitor all the streams, or be even in the chat room with the people who are editing the streams, and take, take note of everything we played and write a small summary of what the hell is in that video. Because for people who are actually trying to write a story about what happened, if they don't have to watch the entire four hours per streamer of video mm -hmm. footage, but can just go to a specific piece at the moment, they can assemble a video about what happened in 10 minutes. In theory. I mean, maybe more than 10 minutes, but definitely much faster than it would otherwise. In terms of, because the problem with editing video is you have to watch all of it. Right. So we're trying to, sh we're trying to remove that requirement for people cutting the pieces by having other people watch it <coughs> and write what is where, okay. almost in real time. Because this is, okay, what's driving all of this is this, by the way. It's, as Occupy, we've won the media war in a zero hour. When stuff is happening, like, when, like if we go Occupy something right now, or there's a demo, the moment that's happening, we own the media. Because we're streaming, we're reporting in real time, the other side cannot lie about what's going on. They try that, it doesn't work. You have to stay quiet. We own it. But two hours later, <coughs> four hours later, when we go home, we have no infrastructure to develop the new stories that they like. We're not competing with them when they're writing the new story. They get to write whatever they want. Mm -hmm. So this is about enabling us to be able to create these new stories before they do. Then we still have to figure out how to diffuse it. That's why I said three parts. Get the information, organize the mission, write stuff, or edit stuff, and then diffuse. It's still the diffusion part, and we'll get to that in a second. Diffusion is the most complicated one, because we actually have to build real huge working groups of people who are going to do diffusion, because we can't have a situation like we have with OWS now, that four or five individuals control all the biggest movement accounts. That's not the way movements work. That, that's, it, it, it's self-defeating to, 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 to have it that way. We need to create a systematic system where the power to diffuse belongs to everybody. Um, anyway, this is just a path. And then, for example, this is an aggregated thing. This thing over here pulls in every single image, every single, and it's a tool we're using. It's this thing that as we're building our own thing, someone created, some company called Rebelman, created a tool that automatically pulls all the Twitters and creates images out of all the tweets 
It basically pulls all the videos and all the images from Twitter that it references whatever hashtags you define. So we're building something similar. We said, hey, we're just going to use that for now. And it's not perfect because it doesn't pull in uh, YouTube and it doesn't pull in blogs and stuff like that. It was just the added blogs. But what they're doing is just they're creating a media aggregator. What we're trying to do is use whatever aggregators we're going to use and combine it with a crowdsourced input. So this is kind of what's go this is what's going on. Uh, so here, if you go through it, this is everything related to, to this Unity campaign coming out from Twitter. There's a lot of stuff going on right now, uh, all over the place. All right. So now, this is when you first go to a group like that. Well, it's a group. It's outfire.com.com slash c slash group where yes and other. I'm not even a member. This character I created just now, this user, I'm not even a member of that group. It's join group. If I choose to join the group. And by the way, that could be the future. All these groups are made to be public. So if you just send it out and somebody is not a member of comps, they will still see all that material. So you, the, only thing you, the only reason you join is so you can contribute material. So on the left over here, get this close. Over here is all of these things like group activity, group log, group bookmarks, group calendar, group discussion, group file. This is the kind of this is the place where <coughs> you can contribute your material right off the bat in, in a visible way. So if you want to, for example, just put in a link, you go to group links, group bookmarks. I oh, bookmarks. I should change it to links. Uh, you go to group bookmarks. Okay. And there's one bookmark in there called final logo. Is that the logo that was the, the assembly for, for that particular work? The final assembly. And you, 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 so anyone can go in. Click add a bookmark, and you can add any link with whatever context. And that immediately goes and seen by all the other members of, of, of the people who are working on that. So you can add you can add what you can add images, you can add links to articles, you can add videos, and so on and so on. So, so this is an engine for crowdsource contribution to media for that particular topic. So if, if for example, if you click on this particular link, it's just gonna download the uh, specific Dropbox thing. This, this was the final logo that's actually, so it's gonna come in. Yeah, <coughs> that's the final logo that's actually being used for, for the campaign, for example, right? But you can add any links. You can add links to articles, you can add links to whatever. If beyond that, the thing on blogs, we don't have any blogs here, so blogs. But if you wanna write an article connecting to things, so the people use that article, so you, you, let's say you don't have a link, you just, but you have a lot of ideas. If you wanna write an article, you just add a blog post, and you can write as that user, a blog about how the action connects to other things. So you can start producing all kinds of ideas because you have a full editor. And that information, it, yeah, goes into the group. And everyone who's looking at the group is going to see that and, and that will inform how they cover, hopefully, whatever they're going to cover. So this is, this is something that could be very useful, again, for these huge diffused actions like I don't know more, large mobilization, so on, so on, so on. Because it will allow people to come in and add, throw out context. We're, we're trying to recruit philosophers, we're trying to recruit uh, uh, ec economists to actually go in and, and provide like economical context for all of these big social actions which are being done. Uh, so the last thing that happens with the, all of these groups is that when you start a group, anyone can start a group, right? This is where the whole thing is completely decentralized. So you can go along to the side, you can start a group that deals with whatever action, and then you just basically, it's broken up into two parts. The top part when you go in is actually a wiki. Like for example, for this particular group, when we created the wiki, we put a pad for people to collaborate, and we put the rebel mouse in there. But you can put a lot more stuff in the, in, in the wiki. You can make the wiki automatically download stuff from particular blogs. So if it's an action related to a particular blog, you can just make the wiki subscribe to the blog. The important thing <coughs> is once you start that group, you need to designate people who can administer it. Your job is to actually go through all the submissions when people submit stuff through bookmarks, through videos, or whatever, and insert it in the, into the front page. Because the whole idea is that people look at all this information, write stuff, create stuff, and resubmit into the thing so that your work is gets get informed as other people are writing it. And then your work is seen by other people because the whole point is that this page that will be looked at the people who are going to be doing diffusion about the event. Like if you, let's say you're doing diffusion about the event in the middle of the event. Having this up, you have access to all the images related to it, all the logos, and as the new articles are coming up, that people make, you're going to see those articles. You can start diffusing them. So it becomes a self-referential thing. So that's basically the whole idea. Not sure, I can show you some, what, what it looks like for something more hardcore, which is the Syrian. We have people. Now the Syrian one was created, will be created, but the Syrian, people are not really working on it, as in country doing <coughs> crowdsource contribution. It's designed exclusively as a real-time gathering information of stuff coming out of Syria, 
why we did that? Because there's a huge collective, international collective for telecomics, which has been doing basically media center in the crowd for the Syrian conflict for the last six months. So this, so this is more about just taking what they're doing, and it's basically some service, I think, and putting it in all one organized place as well. Also for their own, for their own purposes. So if you look at these new groups, that was just set up the other day. And this is a resource for up-to-the-minute news, basically, on Syrian coverage. So this is an example where you can use these groups without the whole crowdsourcing focus of people contributing information to actually create a, like, a real-time update on what's going on with a particular It's going to take a little while to roll because this particular page, will, this particular page pulls in stuff from a lot of places. Okay, it has the, the main Wi-Fi channel. Okay, one of the things we incorporate in all this stuff are a lot of different chat engines. So the primary, in terms of chats, chats are very important. Having chat rooms because it allows you to start coordinating. Uh, so one of the chats we've been using, by the way, is IRC, because that's been around for a long time. <coughs> All right, for this particular one, it has another rebel model related to, to, related to the Syrian freedom stuff, everything coming out of Syria. But if you go behind the rebel model, we put together all the links to all the sources, to different, for everything going on in the Syrian war. All the relative pages, all the, all the key blogs, all the main Twitters to follow, and so on, so on, so on, and texts. All the live streams, which are active, coming out of Syria. This is what we, this, the, we're consolidating information covering that thing, right? Uh, and we make this page automatically subscribe to key blogs that are dealing with Syrian conflict. So this is the kind of place, if you get this link, like this one in particular, telecomics is, for example, if you get something like this, like the area on the left, most likely it's just, that thing is just down. So because we are, what you're actually doing is you're embedding other sites. It's not about just grabbing things, it's, it's, it's literally a bunch of links and visualizing those links to, to, to other platforms around. So anyway, so this is the idea. This is when, when, when these pages automatically subscribe to blogs. You get real-time information about what's going on. Uh, so that's basically, and the last thing is the communication tools. I was saying we didn't have communication tools before. We didn't want to have chat before. So that part is ready. We actually have chat rooms now over here. You can create your own. And you can, so the, the thing about those chat rooms, something to keep in mind, is they're persistent. So if you create a chat room for a particular working group and you start talking in it, that will stay forever for now. It's said to stay forever. So anyone else who com comes in can see that conversation. But this is something that can now allow you to start organizing in real time. So, okay, these are the, these are the, the main chat rooms right now. What do you mean the chat stays forever? What do you mean? Anyone will be able to see it because it's a group chat, public open working groups. Mm -hmm. like, that's why we're asking you not to register with your real name. Right. <laughs> that's what, you know what I'm saying? Because, mm -hmm. but, but it allows, it will, anyone else who joins <coughs> that group, who joins that chat, will be able to go back and see what <coughs> has been said. But I see on live stream users and moderators try to chill everyone out, they clear the chat, and then it becomes... We can do the same thing here. Mm -hmm. well, the difference about this chat, we don't want to be moderating people. So with, with creating actually self-moderation, yeah. you can choose to ignore a particular user, if you want. You can just click on the name, and it, 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 so you are moderating it yourself, basically. Because we have too many problems, with people mo by creating being developed, but it's already operational in terms of like, it's still being developed, it will always probably be developed to some degree, <coughs> because we're always gonna be coming up with better ways of doing things, but it's already very effective in quickly organizing all this stuff. You can embed stuff from Facebook, wherever, it doesn't matter, but you're not keeping it on Facebook, you're not keeping it on all these corporate platforms, it just exists as a set of links, and it's very simple, like if you go into your account, you say export everything you've ever done, or export this group, it will give you a dump of all the information to a particular group. You can actually download it onto your... Because it's very important to be able to grab the information from all of these sites, so you can use it later and so on if you wanted to. But that's, this, that's basically the next platform. But it has communication tools and it has the ability to consolidate all the information. I know you guys probably were expecting something much more exciting from the Tactical Media Workshop. But the real Tactical Media is actually being able to connect now. Because we already know, all the, the other stuff is so easy. We already know, we know how to do live stream. We can get a live stream from anywhere, fine. We know how to, 
We could do every, yeah, anyone could do it. It's right. like there's, there's, there's nothing new about it. And by the way, if you look at how many people are viewing, watching this stuff, the newest of the live stream has worn off. People oh, yeah. do not want to sit there for hours and watch action. They actually want a consolidated thing, like two, three minutes, or maybe better yet, they just want an article who did some embedded video because they don't even have time to watch the video. They're going to be looking at the stuff on their phone on the way to work. If you can make it so they can look at other stuff on the way to work, then a lot of people are going to watch it. But they're not going to sit there for hours, follow your live stream in real time, hoping <coughs> something happens. It's often effective in a comment when people say, check out minute four, 17 seconds. No, but that's what editors are for, because you have tools. And they, 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 mm -hmm. get, like, we, it's very easy to take this live show footage of it and download it to your computer. So if you knew which pieces to download, you can quickly download it, just crop it together. Mm -hmm. For example, right now, we just went to trial for, my, for, for when we got evicted from 13 Thames. A piece of evidence we used, someone script cat global rev when we got attacked and posted it online with some commentary. And that's what we used at trial, and this is what got all the charges thrown out. So it was because we didn't have our recordings. They took our recordings and they raided the place. But we had the stuff that was streamed. And actually, after it was streamed, we didn't have that either because on my stream you have to click save before it saves it. And, and no one had a chance to get saved because we were arrested. Mm -hmm. uh, but someone screen capped it and re uploaded to YouTube. And that became the evidence of the court. Mm -hmm. You gotta have that, hit that red button on live stream ready. Real fast. <laughs> well, in general, this is something that's going on. But as more and more people are thinking about this, developing this. For example, a lot of people had a lot of problems with Ustream. Uh, very often, footage that is sensitive, so to speak, shows always brutality, whatever, disappears. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It happens over time. Mm -hmm. We don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it's an accident. Maybe, maybe it's footage disappears so much that they got a lot of police footage with it, or maybe it's selected, we don't know, but it disappears. So people are building tools right now. There's a, there's a, couple, there's a few programmers in the way, oh, no, sorry, San Francisco. And they, it's basically gonna be a live streaming app, and what's gonna do is it, it, it will go to a server that you specify, it could be a home computer, or it could be a movement server. That server will take a snapshot of your footage. And then the server, or that server could be a Windows box, like your house, it doesn't really matter, as long as it can. It will grab, take a snapshot, and then retransmit it to your stream because you, so you, so you a million people can watch it. But the whole point is we need to put something in between these corporations and our content to, to make sure we're protected. Because otherwise we're losing it. Also we want to anonymize people. Because right now they know, if, even if we give you new use, specific usernames or whatever, they can <coughs> identify that your IP streamed this video. That's a problem. That's a way to identify you. So we still need these balancing machines. So as far as your stream is concerned, this thing is just coming out of this machine as well as 50 other people. Any questions, guys? Yeah. So um, you said it automatically compiles like all the relevant blogs. Sure, like this thing. Is it through a bot or like somebody's doing it? Okay, the bot I'll show you in a second. Okay. I'll show the bots a little different from this. This is. Let's go, let's, let's, let's pull up the, let's go to, I'll, I'll take on the global rev. <coughs> we can actually look at global rev live, which is the global rev. Yeah. Thing. What we do that we haven't done for a few days because we got really burnt, but we're creating a pad every single day of what videos we should play in the channel. And everybody knew about that pad in the channel, all the viewers. And they could go there and contribute videos that should be played. And they would like vote on them, discuss them, whether they should be good at Because sometimes people include stuff that we shouldn't play. Like we don't play copyrighted material. We don't play movies from Hollywood, right? If we did, we'll get shut down, right? Stuff like that. We'll submit that stuff anyway. But then, um, if you search for anything, we'll find it, by the way. <coughs> There's a global web right now. And you see the global web is very small book. We only have 22 people in the collection. Well, it was 23 until a few days ago, but then one person burnt out. <laughs> she quit. Like psychological, mental burnout. I'm quitting. I'm coming back for three months next year. But on the way out, she called us all happy. Um, it was very wonderful. Uh, Step one to bed. What? No, you, the global rev is so high pressure. Yeah. When people flame out, they flame out. Like because they can't leave because it's so engaging, but they can't stay because it's burnt out. Mm. They leave uh, with, you know, not, sometimes they leave with a very not nice thing. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at this, okay, the bots. The bots actually exist in the channel. If you go to the Google Rev, it automatically dumps you into a bunch of channels. Uh, uh, 
make up a username, again, we'll talk about it in a minute. So whatever, you make that username, it'll dump you with a bunch of channels, chat channels. And, um, hello, okay, fine then. So you're gonna see a bunch of tabs, okay, you're gonna see a bunch of tabs up there, right? Global address tab, for example, this is what all the editors are, for the global, global address. Okay, so like right now, it tells, it tells you here on, on, on the, Actually, in the they're not, not all of them say my address on global address because it's an open room, but a lot of them are. The odds are, if they have an and in front of them, they're probably an editor because they, if you have this and in front of it, that means you can control the bot inside that room. So that particular room bot is very simple bot. It only reports if someone contacts us on, on Twitter, for example. So if someone tweets to global rev, it says, hey guys, you just got tweeted, that's what the tweet was, so editors can see it. It doesn't follow actual feed. But the global watch one is to keep it open for a while, it's real time. Okay, so what happens in here is that we have a database of about 700 live streams at this point, worldwide. So what Global Watch does is it monitors them, have they gone live or not. The second they go live, it notifies us that this live streamer has gone live. Obviously, it makes no sense to monitor all 700 at once, so people can easily have a whole manual how to create your own ch like channel in that IRC, or you can set it up on, any, on a bunch of other platforms, so you monitor the ones you want to monitor. There's a whole manual on up by the comp side. You didn't know about this? No. Okay, so if we wait, and someone actually goes streaming, for example, I can start streaming now, and you will see in a little, a little while, in a minute, he will notify the glass <coughs> video went live. Let, let me see, let me go to like, let's say, Ben Buda, for example. I promised to stream this workshop, but I failed, because we didn't, like, okay, so let's say, no connection detected. Is this thing on? Yeah. In order someone has to stream for it to be demonstrated, so we're going to do it. And so the way I see works, it's not persistent. Remember I mentioned persistent chat? So in order for you to see something, you have to be inside that, that room. Otherwise, you will never see it. It doesn't keep logs. That's what we wanted to create persistent chat so people can log in and, and capture the information backwards. The chat engine will create it. You can create rooms which, don't, which are not persistent. You, you can also create anonymous communications if you want. But the main chats for the working groups would want to be persistent because we want people to be able to plug in and see what's being discussed and tell them what we You're still free to create any room you want, whatever, and have your private conversation. All right, so now we're broadcasting. In a little while, it should, be, it should notify us. Yeah, the bot actually here, you can this thing. That's the other one. That's the bot. So it's going to notify us in a few minutes. The XGR Live, you said? Yeah, that's the bot. It basically logs in as a user. It sits there, and the second something happens, it communicates, providing it's working. So you, the user, is... Therefore, streaming under that bot. No, the, it's a program. I'm just saying, in this room, the bot is this user over here. Okay. Basically, we have a computer log into that chat room and sit there. And like right now, I'm streaming on the on the thing. In a little while, it's going to say, well, "Glass BD and one live." Except it's complaining that my stream count is very low. So I don't know what YouTube is going to do. We'll see. We'll see how long it takes. But anyway, this is how the bots work. Uh, and, oh, this works, global... and this will work for any kind of live stream, uh, live stream, you stream. Oh, yes. Uh, I'll tell you what this. What we did was this. It follows this database. If you go to globalrevolution.tv. You were there. Just hit return. Slash wire. I think what's his name sent it to you actually. Ben, ben sent it to you, right? Uh, yes. Okay. So you, then you say, what the hell do I do with this? <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> but this is a database for every single live stream and also link to everything they've shot by country. And so if you create, for example, in USA, boom. So this is all the stuff coming out of USA. Is in, in order. That's in the database. If you put in any one of those, What we need to be doing is we need to be figuring out a method 
to connect with the database now to co for context, right? So the way we're going about it is insert those streams in the paths related to groups. So you know someone's streaming something, go in the path of that group. Like there's a group, there's an action. Let's say stop one, for example. Right? You know who the streamers are. You put that their channels inside the paths for that group that deals with Occupy Walmart, for example, right? Then other people can start to fill out what was on those streams and so on. So your, your source of reference is not gonna be this huge database of every single streamer, but the, but the group in which someone put in information that the streamers are gonna be active there. So yeah, that you need that advanced knowledge, who's gonna be at a particular event. Well, no, but if you're monitoring Twitter during the thing, you saw that this person's <coughs> streaming there, you insert them in the path then. You can do it during the action. The point, these are real-time documents, so you can keep updating them in real time. It's just what happens very often. One person notices it, and that's it. Or the one who knows, the rest of the team doesn't know. So this is why you want to. It's all about organizing information. If we need talented people to come in to look at this model, how do you organize all this? What's the best way to organize all this information? Is the way we're organizing it now clever? It's okay. It's a C minus. It's not an F, but it's definitely not an A. There's definitely better ways to organize it. Especially as it grows. Especially as it grows. But the whole point is that that's where we need more people involved to start doing this. Because we're not offering, we're not offering anything but a platform where people can collaborate. And, and willingness to completely rearrange everything to make it work. To make, you know what I'm saying? This, the template is not defined as this is the template, right? This is just a common place for us to work. That's why it's so simplistic and minimalist right now. Because we don't know what the best way is for it to actually be amazing, right? And maybe there's 20 different ways of doing things. People want to do it in 20 different ways. So then we'll work with them to figure out how to do, arrange the stuff in 20 different ways. Because arranging the stuff is easy. The tools are basically there. And we can train that. But organizing information is something that we're still learning how to do. Because we are dealing with overflow information. We have too much information. And our minds, especially the ones who are mixing global rap and doing the doing this movement-wide media stuff, we, we're swimming in a sea of fragments. It was, but after swimming the steel fragments for a year, we're like, we can't, it's just not working. I mean, it's working, but it's, again, it's, like you said, well, whatever is okay, but it's not great. Well, why is it not great? It's not because we don't want it to be great, it's not because we don't want it to work. It's physically impossible to analyze all of that information with 20 people. <clears throat> I mean, the successful movements like Act Up, there was one issue, and that healthcare generally that well, came up. But this is 99.9% .9 of everything that's But this is everything. Dead, exactly. exactly. These are all the definitions. Like, by the way, they're all connected, obviously. Yeah. But in order to make, you were able to, the way ACT UP worked was shocking actions and so shocking human and well. shocking human stories. Yeah. And shocking human stories. Because behind each one of those actions was a real person that was dying. Right. And they made, and they took these people and they made them real to the, everyone else. They brought coffins to the White House with bodies in them. They brought coffins with the bodies, but they also showed interviews of people as they were going through their final days for disease that was not being treated. They humanized them. Mm -hmm. What Act Up One was not just the shocking tactics, it was a combination of the shocking tactics and the fact that we were able to humanize the victims because these were not, these were not numbers. These were, you know, these were people. So this is, okay, yes, so, so, that's it. it but you guys were very centrally organized, and you could because you had one issue. And also, that nothing stops the centrally organized groups to use the system and collaborate with others. You could be working together as a team of six people, like an affinity group, I would call it, right? Nothing, Occupy Wall Street made affinity group like a bad term. There's nothing wrong with affinity group. There's nothing wrong with six people who organize we're going to do this together. This, it's amazing, right? It's affinity groups that have been getting things Parts done at Occupy Wall Street. Right. I mean, sure. You form an affinity group, and I say your affinity group publishes a TV station, or publishes a news program, or publishes a blog, or does whatever, or, or does a huge particular action. So use these tools to organize this stuff, or plug in, or get information from other people, or whatever, to do your job. <clears throat> Do whatever you want to do. Yeah, the whole it's this like uh, when people were creating these <coughs> aggregator tools, they were either to consolidate information to present it everywhere else to the world. Like the way people think of aggregators, we're going to collect all this information and present it to the world, to for the audience. This is not that. It's not designed to be that. It's not pretty. We're not even bothering to make it pretty. This is for the people who are going to do the presentation. Level one, because we could not present shit properly, because we couldn't organize the material. So at least we want to have that done, and then everyone else can come in and start figuring out how to present it. 
So that's so yeah. So global RAM is using this tool, and we're running our shows that <coughs> way. But other people should as well. And if it, if we're going to see cross pollination then. This is what this is where you this is where your idea of the of national media network is going to come in, because you're working with like four or five people now across the country trying to figure this out, right? So they're hopefully going to read our ad, mm -hmm. take the information, and put that on their radio shows, put it on their shows, you, right? This, yeah. I was talking to you about this six months ago. I was like, start getting all the stuff on the streams to do the show because your life would be easier, right? And you just didn't have enough, you, like you did you have no way of knowing where all the streams were. Yeah, yeah, there's a few things. There's a few things that we have to work out. Um, so, right now we're looking at um, editorial decisions. Like, you have a TV show, a radio show, and you are figuring out what stories you're going to cover this week. Now, I'm proposing that all the various media groups at Occupy do this collectively. Not that we all decide for each other, but at least we get together for a couple hours and look at the stories of the week. And then we could say, like, okay, everybody who wants to cover this story, you can talk to this person. And then you, you have your separate after-meeting chat to, to discuss, like, you know, who's going, to, who's going to write the story, who's going to edit, et cetera, et cetera. Um, <coughs> I've set up a spreadsheet um, for, yes, for yes, so your Google spreadsheet. yeah yeah, um, and I'm I'm wondering like it seems like the the equivalent of that spreadsheet on Occupy the Comms is your view of all the various groups and probably no no that's the whole thing you can create two types of groups first of all there's a calendar yeah so if people start putting stuff on the calendar the calendar within the calendar and every event is expanded like add links to tabs or whatever there's one central calendar you can create there is a, a, a calendar for groups but you can have one group that deals you've set up an occupy media group yes right that calendar can pull stuff in from other places if you want so to speak right i know what your question is you said there's so many groups how do you find out what the fuck is going on yeah how do we decide how do we make those decisions right we don't make decisions the whole idea about this tool is that we don't... I'm saying we editors, all of us, all of us who, are, who, are, who are thinking about um, putting together get, any kind of presentation. How do we get all this information? It's spread all over the site. How uh, do you get this information? Yeah, yeah. More about making decisions, because you can figure out how to Where's make Where's our decisions. snapshot view? Well, activity. If you look at activity for the site, it tells uh -huh. you all the latest things that have been created. The only thing it doesn't well, tell that's you... That's too much information. That's too much information. It will tell you which groups are active. It, the only thing it doesn't tell you is people are editing the pads. The pads have been updated yet. And that's tricky. That's just technically tricky. We just don't know how to do that. So you're so suggesting doing like a glance over like the last week's No, I suggest or? actually creating on this media team, mm -hmm. whatever, creating a pad, which is like a spreadsheet. Yeah. But that's open to everyone to just put stuff in. And so in, the, in, the, in having somebody to do curation of that pad, so having then another spreadsheet or whatever that summarizes everything in that pad. So someone whose job it is every single day to go through the pad that everyone jumps, dumps stuff in and organize it to different One places. reason why I chose to use spreadsheet instead of just a pad is that a spreadsheet forces you to think in terms of rows. So each story has one row. I know, but the problem is how many people are working on your spreadsheet even though you made access to the public? Uh, how many people are adding stuff to it? At a given time, probably. I mean, <coughs> we probably have like three people looking at it and contributing at this point. Contrib you have people contributing to it? Yeah. Because we had problems when we were doing spreadsheets, people weren't contributing to them. So we're going, so we're using pads because pads are easier to contribute to, you just type. That's why. That's why they're easier to pads. contribute to, they're not so easy to keep in order. No, but that's why you need someone to. Basically, you need somebody, either you or somebody, should be going through these contribu contributing pads and pulling stuff from mission, putting it to your spreadsheet. Yeah. So basically, I'm I'm in, I'm training people to do that. Like Perfect. you know, we have these we have these um, interoccupy calls every yeah, week, yeah. which have been very sort of unstructured and casual. Okay, everybody take your turn saying what's going on in your in your part neck of the woods, and everybody leaves the call overwhelmed with information. I'm training people to like okay, as we go along, Is note this of, in the spreadsheet. Are there a lot of information on those calls? Have yes. Put, okay, yes. that's good. Yes. Because I haven't been to it. Because the, the timing is horrible. For me. <sighs> yeah. Because yeah. it's so late. Right. 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 We, we have about 5 p.m. East Western time, right? Uh, 3 p.m. Eastern, yeah, 3 p.m. Eastern is the Thursday <laughs> one, and then they've got the different mumble ones. 3 p.m. is the night, actually. Yeah, yeah. We have to do 3 p.m. is night okay. in Europe. But yeah, you, being in Europe is hard. Six hour difference from New York makes the evening meetings uh, very torturous. Mm -hmm. Like, 8 o'clock meeting in New York is a 4 o'clock meeting for me in, 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 right, in, right. in, in 
Okay, so to get to get a view of um, you know overview, like what stories we might want to cover. Well, here's the thing. It seems it's about self-creation in a sense. Mm -hmm. So basically, but when we start with like, oh, I don't know, war is actually a good book potential. Well, it doesn't matter. I can show you, people, but people do it in different ways. But the important thing is, next time there's a mobilization, which think thing to cover that we're working, we we'll create a group for it, and we will all work together on partnering the groups to create this real-time media thing that everyone can, can contribute to because it's more than just a spreadsheet of what to cover, right? There's a lot more information that you need. That's that's the whole thing. You actually need for as we start mobilizing going forward, we need to start putting better ideas into what's going on because like one of the criticisms of Occupy after not after the eviction, let's say two three months after the eviction by January February last year, one of the main criticisms of Occupy was that we were doing the same actions over and over again. And there was a shortage of new ideas. There was no new ideas. There was no, like we were just doing the same thing over and over again, like if you, across the country. And we were getting smaller. And we we're just doing the same thing over and over again. That didn't persist forever. I mean, we, we developed new ideas by like the summer, I guess, or by, by definitely by September. But there was a whole four or five month period because we just been evicted because everyone, you know, just the, there was a problem, right? So this is what people need. We need a, a, a platform for people's idea, to, for someone to come up with a new idea, a new way to, to phrase something, to think about something, to connect things to our history, to connect things to our uh, to knowledge of economy, of everything. And this is where the, stu the stuff needs to, be, needs to go in. This, this, this is where all these things you attach, that's that at a blog post or whatever, this is where it comes in. Because then we can go to people who are experts or whatever and ask to contribute ideas on how, to, how they relate to that particular issue. So for example, we, 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 during I don't know more, we didn't get to do it. This was like, we have to do this. Find people who can give good, concise history of how Indian rights were managed during these land disputes in the past. Because that's a very important part of how you're gonna cover I don't know more, which is what we're doing, right? And so a lot of, without having access to that history, easy access to that history, you're not gonna be able to cover I don't know more very well because you're, like, you're talking about an action that draws out of years of frustration related to a lot of things. If you don't know the history of those frustrations, whatever, stuff like that. The economical conditions in the reservation, very important part of the story. The economical conditions in Canada at those at the reservation, very important part of the story, and so on, so on, so on. So this is the building blocks we need to be putting together to actually create the full narrative. And this is the level we need to go to, because if we go to that level, and we're in, almost in real time reporting what's happening on the streets, but we'll start delivering that analysis that really explains to you the history mm -hmm. and the background and so on, then that's when we're gonna be able to take on the corporate media. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the spreadsheet is only to give a snapshot and reference to other places where, like such as the groups yes. on Occupy the Comms, where you can then go for further development of the story. It's basically just to give an overview and a place to go to, 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 to find your basic links. But why are spreadsheets hard to enter? People don't edit them. We, we found, I don't know, we tried. It was, it's, we found, but you, you got people to edit them, so that's good. Yeah. They don't. Well, they, I, they, I, they don't. I don't know why. They, no, but they weren't editing pads either for a long time, so maybe, maybe, it's, just, maybe it's just a question of time. It, 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 is, it is a learning curve thing, and you know, uh, there's no solid answer. I mean, I had trouble at first with the spreadsheet. Like, I thought it was simple enough. People, I don't know how to use it. I don't know how to use it. I'm like, okay, I'll make another sheet of instructions. Okay? Yeah. People didn't know how to click and see the instructions. So like, okay. I'll make, I'll set the default so that the instructions are the first thing that open when you open the document. What happened next? People started putting the information in, in the instructions sheets, like right into the instructions. Like, no, read the instructions and then follow them. Yeah, don't, yeah, don't. Yeah. So, so, so then I had to lock no. that sheet so people couldn't type into the, it. These tools, <laughs> these tools are not very efficient yet. Like, it's not like, you know, you just touch this thing and like, it transfers your knowledge onto this thing to be shared with us. It's not like that. We really have to like, bend over backwards, even with the tools we built to put the stuff in the format that others can use. It's an evolving thing. Like, I think only now, it's funny, like a year and a half after Occupy started, only now we're beginning to conceptually think through, okay, how do we actually collaborate together? How do we actually work together? How do we actually share information? And part, part of that is that we're, we're overcoming this culture of, of independence, where everybody does of autonomous action, where everybody just no. does whatever they want. Actually, it's the opposite. We're overcoming the culture of, because when Occupy started, we embraced collectivism in a great way. But in the beginning, we misunderstood what it meant. Because in the beginning, we thought collectivism meant we have to come to consensus decision on something and everything. Mm. And we spend all our time trying to find consensus on things that we don't need to find consensus on. 
Because the interesting thing about media is not that we speak with one voice, but we speak with many. And now that we've embraced that to some degree all over the movement, now we can say, okay, fine, so we're going to speak with many voices, but we still need the same information, more or less, because information is actually neutral. When you said editorial decisions, the editorial decisions should be made group by affinity group, reported by reporter. That's what we do. That's what we right. do. So everybody who's a part of the, but of the network. But they should share information. But should share information. Yeah, we share information, yeah. and, and we just like uh, bounce off ideas off each other, you of know? Of course. So you might have you might have a perspective on a story um, that I will use in my coverage, but I'm not necessarily going to cover the story exactly the way you're doing it. But uh, you know, by talking how about how you do how you do diffusion, that. distribution, diffusion, yeah, diffusion, quote diffusion. How do you get people to click on the links to watch them once you produce finished content? Okay, at this point, we have no collaboration on distribution. Everybody is still doing their own thing. Okay, I think in the future, that's so we should form a diffusion group. Mm -hmm. uh, that pe that's open, that people should join if they want to help diffuse. Because what's going to happen is they're going to be fed all the stuff that's being produced, all the stories. What do we produce? We produce stories, narratives, whatever. So the stories that get produced gets fed to a group, and then that group will try to push it out. Because as this group gets bigger and it develops, because diffusion is not trivial, actually. For example, let's take Twitter. Oh, I've been, no. I've been having copy and paste parties a few times. No, you can do copy and paste parties, but there's more than that. Yeah, For yeah. example, Twitter. It's not just. We to say tweet about this. That's not enough. It's how you word the tweet is very important. So you will notice that if you word the tweet, there's some tweets which are brilliantly worded. And those tweets get a thousand retweets. And some tweets are boring. And they get no retweets. Right? So if you have a group of people, like, and this is why we want to have these chat groups, where we can start throwing and brainstorming how to word something. So fine, we decide we're going to diffuse this article, but wow, how do you diffuse it? You usually have to grab something from inside the article, insert it. You have to make it interesting. You have to make when people see it, scroll across the screen, say, okay, fine, what the hell is that? I want to click on that. Then you're going to get this thing going viral because once they see it, they're going to retweet it and so on and so on. And so, on. so this is kind of, this is the kind of stuff. But it's the same thing with Facebook. Is how do you make a head, okay, it's the same problem with Twitter. How do you make a headline, right? And do you have in the headline, we have one smart guy is there a headline, or do you actually go through the brainstorming exercise with a bunch of people thinking about it? So if you create a diffusion group, then you have a brainstorming exercise of how to make the headline. Then the headline could be the Twitter, or mm -hmm. what were you saying? And where's the group going to meet, and how will they be communicating? A chat, like I said, even on comms, you can set up, we can see, you can create a chat room like that. So okay. if we actually decide to make a group, you don't have to do it on comms. We can use something like a jabber.org or something like that, because there are all these tools, you can access it from your phone. There's no process. It's brainstorming. Oh, yeah. It's a, that's the I thing. I think we're going to be having more online, like uh, Google Hangouts or an inter inter uh, occupy conference calls. To, but to conference calls take up people. time. Well, yeah, but that's meeting, meetings do take up time. But some things really require meetings. Some things do, but for yeah. real time, how do we make a headline? How do we make a tweet? You don't need a meeting. You just need a bunch of people like kind of monitoring and saying, okay, fine. Oh, this is how you do it. This it how depends. Do it. I mean. A big problem with Occupy Media right now, um, this is again what I was saying about the culture of, um, of independence and, and autonomy, yeah. is that uh, most people are working uh, entirely on their own initiative and having minimal contact with each other. And the result of that is that, first of all, we duplicate each other's efforts a lot. And you see this at any action where just as with the commercial media, all the photographers are just like edging, you know, trying to get their angle to get their shots. When even though we're a movement, we really should be sharing all our. No, we shouldn't because we need to. You see the problem? Okay, but I'll, I'll make an argument that we shouldn't actually too much, because if we start sh not share, not doing this independent stuff, we're gonna end up in centralization problems because the only way the movement can remain vibrant is if it can, can remains centralized. Because the second you start centralizing, you start creating centers of power, and media is power. Make like, make no mistake about it. Like in Madrid right now, there's a war going on for the media center. Okay. People have started to like try to control the media center. Why? Because that's the power to control the movement. Right, of course. Right? right. However, however, what? I mean... You are your own media. You have to make your own media. No, yeah, but that, you that's... Are your own media. You are your own media. But if you start creating structures within the movement where we're centralizing that, it's a problem, actually. So we want to actually create something that's efficient. We want to address your concern, actually. But something that cannot be taken control of anybody. Right, right. 
I think um, we'll what we're after here, we're after here, we're after here so much as not finding a perfect structure, but finding working habits. Working habits, that's different. Yeah. Well, working habits is another thing. Like another problem, like with if you're filming, you see, oh, somebody else got that shot. I don't have to get it. That's a really bad idea, because you're going to be working with all kinds of people, and some people like to share the footage, and some people don't. So if you just see someone random, you say they're going to get that shot. We've been in these situations before. We've run into problems. Right. And, and, and like after you've been in the movie for a while, you know who is who. You know who you don't even bother asking for footage and you know who you have to ask five times and who is going to come sure, forward. Sure, but I'm way. just, of course. Yeah. But of course. No, no, if you yeah. work, agree to work on a team and share footage, it's one thing. But anyway, I'm just saying, I'm, just, I'm not attacking what you're saying. I'm just saying, like, it's, it's we, we, a lot of us, at least working with, with this, we're extremely paranoid of centralization because we see the efficiencies to be gained from centralization, but it's very dangerous because we've just created a central media center in Madrid and we've left it. We left it and started banning people for, for political beliefs, which had nothing to do with the principles of the movement, but for, for, for related to the internal political battles within the movement. Not, not how related and storage of the footage created. Well, that, like, the, the tool we build does not decide how you edit the footage. This is left up to the participants and be, the, we expect participants to form affinity groups. So when you find out, because you need more than one person to make a piece or whatever, right? But the point is, you you got to create neutral spaces where people can just collaborate without worrying about any of the politics, apolitical. So you can actually work on that side with a bunch of Republicans, especially the people staying true to organizing the information. It doesn't matter who you work with. Then how you use it should be left up to you, right? So you can decide to focus, focus on that, whatever. The reality of the situation is, if all this information becomes free. It, like mass process like that, more and more people are going to start thinking in, in certain ways. It, it's going to start destroying a lot of the uh, stereotypes which are driving the divisions in our society as, as this develops, right? It's, it's just, so it's not, it's, I'm not being completely honest when I say, oh, it's completely apolitical. Free information is actually very political. Free uh, and, and people empowering to actually contribute to information is very political. But at the surface, at least on the principles, it's, it's apolitical. Because that's the only way you're going to make it consistent. That's the only way you're going to, people are going to feel that it doesn't exist to manipulate the message. It's only they're going to trust. Share it. ethics and values. Shared ethics and values. Shared and ethics. What we were talking about. Sure. I mean, yeah, but that's easier said than done. I mean, like the devil is in the details. Can discern when a group of American Nazis come in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, of course, of course, of course. No, but those those are going to be more obvious. I'm telling you, the problems we're going to have with this. It's not going to be groups of Nazis coming in and putting a swastika on the page, because that's just graffiti, that's just like whatever. No, it's going to be people coming in pretending that they're doing the good right, stuff. And, and, and occupying the position or Disruptive. inserting false information or trying to divide people. Disruptive. It's the or, same, or, but yeah. law enforcement to... Sure, sure, sure. And there's just there's just been a lot of trouble with people who don't like you know will tell you will will tell you that they share your values, but then when you actually work with them, it's not until you actually work with them that you realize like no, actually this person's got a major control issue and it's getting in the way of everything he's doing, even though like he's spouting the same ideology as as me, and you don't yeah, you, you don't discover that until you work with people really. Well, no, but the way you okay, so that's why that's why I don't like the whole centralization thing. That that's a, the example you gave. That's an example of centralization because it was essentially the, that person was responsible for a centralization like media part of the movement, and he was using that centralization to, to, for personal power to, or pursue personal agenda to a point where others who want to have a voice were excluded. That's that's why it's, so maybe it's better to replicate and remain free than to centralize it became less like. I think I think we need to find a balance because. As it is now, we're collectively expending a lot of effort, and we're not getting very far in terms of getting the message out. And I see okay, the main missing... problem is the lack of coordination. Um, you sure? Is that it? Is, is there a... Um, let's, let's form a circle, In active days, we call it the media committee. Mm -hmm. um, committee is a weird word, but I see many people burn out in the history, and if they just had one person behind them, they got sick. You know what I mean? They unconsciously, consciously knew that there wasn't as much pressure on them. And a media committee was just, you know, a convergence to present uh, fact-checked stuff and what if people are working on, and then leave. People coordinate this and that. This is now a new time. This is social media, digital, anonymous-based stuff where people are trying to work on things. How do media come together in localities like New York City? Different people perhaps working on a working group for healthcare versus 
uh, the general sure. Occupy cool. Wall Street and taking on all the banks and the Goldman Sachs, the city for I mean, how does the media community well, get together and share? This is what we're working on. We're all friends. We're not even working on shared York, ethics and values. New York has such a concentration of media people in terms of people who, what is a media person? It's people who know how to speak, people who know how to write, and people who know how to edit videos, but we'll talk about messaging, right? We have such, so many people in New York, right? And the actions are happening all over the country and all over the world. Right. So what we need to be doing is creating support networks for all of these activists around the country. Because we have a center of, of people who can work together, who can provide that support. So now, for example, that everybody is live streaming, means you don't have to wait two weeks for the guy to upload his, to digitize his footage with his FireWire -right camera and send it to you from Milwaukee. It's there right away. So if you actually like have a, a team of editors ready to go, you can get to work as soon as the action go, gets going to create the piece. Right? So this is the kind of stuff we need to be doing. So we need, this needs to be driven by fundamental like political things which are developing in our country. So the, there's large national campaigns. For example, the campaigns against Walmart, campaigns for fair wage, are very important campaigns. Why? Because not only because Walmart, Walmart is just whatever. If there won't be Walmart, in this economy, there will be another Walmart, so it doesn't really matter. But awareness that people should make a living wage, if that spreads throughout the whole country, that will be another one by Wall Street. I mean, maybe not in terms of the same, but it will have a very strong impact. So then, yeah, so then us, a bunch of New Yorkers, even though, even though we don't have a Walmart, should probably get together and provide support to these actions to actually humanize the same thing you guys did with Time's Up. I mean, not Time's Up, Act Up. Humanize the issue. Because very often you see these protests about Walmart, for example, right now, and you, as you're watching it, you're not connecting that these are families which are starving. <coughs> these are families. What is it like to be, to be bringing up a family with food stamps? What is it really like? I mean, seriously, it's not, it's, not, it's not the best thing in the world. It's not very pleasant. Right? A couple of headlines were now $17 an hour able to be paid to certain managers in Walmart to make their customers slightly. They're shifting, yeah. Lower, but lower still. No, but the, they have a problem. The whole business is based on the fact that people from now on. I mean, that's with a cell phone, I read every single cop's ass in the neighborhood in the neighborhood where people are getting shot. What? We're not, we're not, they do it, they have to, but there's not enough, and there's not enough of them because we need to have a situation in order for this to work. The, the, the cops in their mind, they know that if I do something, there's an 80% chance I'm going to be caught. It will change the way they behave completely. Right now, it's a 5% chance. Because we don't have enough people in the street, so we need to be doing workshops. We need to be we need to be in churches, in black churches, in each of those communities, explaining how to use the basic tools so they can go. And then we need to be setting up centralized uh, centers, so to speak. That situation works. We can work together to collect all the information to make sure if something bad happens, that just sees the light of day. Because if you film something, nobody knows about it. It's a, it, it doesn't matter, like you said before. But it's not. No, like like no, it's like your time's up story about the stock exchange. If you didn't get the camera out, it's as, it's as if it didn't happen. Right, right. Yeah. right. But anyway, the whole point is, this is where like, we need to be doing locally, and this is where we need to probably be going uh, nationally, identify all these national issues. The issue with police brutality is not a local issue. It's, I mean, it's, and specifically, it's targeting, targeting of immigrant communities and, 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 and people of color communities. I mean, you don't have an evidence of police brutality in the New Haven connected to it, you know, or wherever the, like, the hedge fund hangs out. I don't know. I mean, New Haven is actually a poor city. I'm so uh, bad, bad ex Which, where are all the hedge funds? What's the name of that city in Connecticut where all the hedge funds are? It's not New Haven. Oh. Greenwich. Yes, Greenwich. Thank you. Yeah. New Haven is Yale. But Yale is actually on the border, right? It's a, it's a normal poor neighborhood. Right. But anyway, but you, you get the idea. So this is how we need to be thinking. But the, the point is, we need to be finding tools that organize, help us get the right, help to put together. And that's on here, the basic. The basic tool for comms is for organizing a media team, of course, because you have a place where everyone can just plug in and just contribute whatever information. Organize it. You'll see when you work with in ads, it'll blow your mind. It's like if you work with someone like that, as you're writing stuff together, stuff just starts flowing. It's, because it's, it's much better than just a chat, for example, conversation, because it's not broken up. It allows you to organize different parts of the page and have different people work in different parts of the page. So you can work in the wording and da 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 So it's very open and it's completely transparent. Everyone has a different color. And if someone does something stupid, you can, you can easily backtrack. So it's a very efficient tool. And the fine tool will be ultimate. It's not perfect tool, but it's okay. I mean, we, people in Spain have done amazing stuff with them. I've seen them do amazing documents with them. 
so it, 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 it's a useful tool for collaborative writing. So it's like, in the way, okay, so the history, how did we run global ref? How did global, global ref function? We were all over the place. We had this one chat room, and, and, and all the editing decisions, what goes up and what not, was like, it, the rules are, you don't have to report it to the chat room. The rules are, if you're not in that chat room, and you're mixing, and someone goes into the chat room and wants to mix, and you don't respond, if, or if you're, not, if you're not in there, you're gonna be bumped off, because we have a simple, simple, very simple way of replacing somebody. So if you choose not to participate in that conversation as an editor, you have a right. No one's gonna say you have to be in there, but don't complain if you get bumped by somebody else. And then once inside the chat room, people would have discussions of how we're gonna cover all of these editorial decisions we were discussing, were happening in real time, as things were happening, continuously. So whoever was present, just like the Ducati, whoever was present had to make the decision, right? So if you wanted to make all the decisions, you had to be present all the time which led to a lot of burnout, but uh, because a lot of people could not let go. And not because they wanted power, but they wanted to just stay involved. They don't trust right? other people to do the work. No, they trust other people, just, you still want to be involved. It's a lot of fun, especially when, you know, things were, we, right now things are getting more depressing, like there's a lot of violence in Egypt, there's like, we're seeing a lot of stuff happening, which is really, really, really bad. And like, you look at the stuff, you don't even know what we can do about it. Like, a lot of people are losing hope right now, and dealing with all, all of these problems. But, the thing is going to keep moving, right? It's like whether you stay in it or not stay in it, it's like history just keeps on moving, right? So it's just like we just have to adjust and like keep going. But we, this is the whole thing. If, if you have pages like this, which are very easy to plug in, and simple instructions, it becomes very easy to plug in other people. So you're working in an action, you set up a page for that action, you bring in say, two other people who started off with you, fine, your job is to curate the wiki from all the stuff that goes in, how to organize it, whatever. Someone has to organize it. If you have a lot of information coming in, and just a thousand links, and they're not really organized, it's useless. Someone has to do the dirty work, and just go through the stuff and organize it so it makes more sense. And as we're doing it, all right, let's figure out how to organize it so it's self-organizing, how to figure out how it's, you know, because we can evolve the tool, both logic, as the stuff comes in. Maybe it should be automatic, it gets flagged based on topic, or it should, you, know, you know what I'm saying? We can start figuring all that out. Anyway, so that's... If you make a group, no, if you, if you make a group, if you make the group, if you create a group in there, during that, you are the editor. You have the power then to designate other users to be editors as well of that, of that wiki page. In terms of people can just contributing blogs or whatever, you don't control that. It's just automatic. Deadlines, self deadlines. Well, this is how you self-organize. Right. This is the thing. I mean, we the, the, the comms does not have email at all. It doesn't have. You can send messages to each other, but it doesn't go to your email for security reasons. Because email always gets traced to your identity. So that's why we turned it off. That's why the email does not exist there. But it's a joke, basically, because it's. And this is a way, we wanted to, at one point we just wanted to create a database of garbage emails. Did they ever catch it? <laughs> 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 that was the idea. Do we have any of this activity from an Android phone? You can do it. Oh, is I it going to Okay. For, for security purposes. Security purposes. If you want to be anonymous yeah. for stuff like that, install Tor. There's a thing called, for Android, there's a thing called Orbot. O-R-B-O-T. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it will, keep, it will keep you anonymous. Uh, or or O R B O T. They do have something, but it's not as good. Orbit is if you root the phone, if you root the phone, it's now a felony. Rooting is not. Oh, I think it's changing carrying or something. I think no, rooting. The jailbreak thing is, jailbreak is, is legal. The equivalent of jailbreak is rooting is still legal. And I think we can still get around it. It's an act of rooting and not using the rooted ones. So we can just take the phones to Canada, root them there where it's legal, and bring them back. Okay. Just to the act. It's true. It's an act of rooting. It's an act of breaking the code. So just take it to Canada. I think, I Montreal think is six yeah. hours from here. Just like bring a hundred phones, you know, set up the computer, bring them home. Hello, border guard. <laughs> I want to shop. Right, but that's true. They might search you. I don't know. So 
It seems like one of the weak points in the system right now is not enough people logging the, the key <coughs> moments of streams. Is that correct? It's that, no. The weakest point is not enough writers. Okay. Because yeah, this is what yeah. it is. In terms of like leadership, we need leadership. Okay. And I don't mean leadership like designated leaders, right? I mean like for an action, we need people in the conversation saying, you know what, in order to make this happen, I need this and this and this. Because then we can diffuse that, then we can create a, a, like a way. You're talking about writing articles and so on. If, yeah. Writing, you know, it could be articles or it could be an art, writing for a, a, a video piece. It's, mm -hmm. it's people yeah. who conceptualize yeah. Yeah. how to tell the story. Yeah. Because we need people to look what's already there now or give an action and identify what's missing for all of these different actions. And then we can start looking because we have the network. We can tweet out that we need this, this, and this. But we need people to come in who have that mentality to start thinking about it. So it's not... This is not leadership as a role of like, mm -hmm. you are the leader. This is a function of actually getting stuff done within these things. You're not coming in with any special rights on the website, but you're coming in with an approach that I'm going to try to organize all of this into storage we're going to put out. Because, and then that needs to be taught. So one of the guys who's doing this really well right now is actually Matt Hopper from Stop Motion Soul. He's, the, he's one of the streamers. He's been doing a lot of streaming. He started writing blog posts with embedded video, right? So I'm going to be working. I'm going to be working with them a little bit, try, try to get them to almost document the method and just embed that into the manual so people, can, more people can start doing that because that's like, that's the weakest thing, right? Because it's not about just summarizing what's in the streams. Okay, I'll give you guys a great example actually. In Spain, they're much better at organizing stuff. So all the stuff you're complaining about we don't have, they have that in Spain in spades. You know what they don't have? They don't have right. So we have amazing pads with everything organized and no articles come out, right? So we did an experiment. We took one of those pads, quickly translated it into English and sent it to OWS. In two hours, we had articles about every single major one thing. So we have actually the writers. We need to bring them in. And the organizing will come later because in the end, the writers in the beginning can start doing the dirty work and working together and doing the organization. But then more people will come and join as we, because we need to write manuals. We need to explain to people how to plug in yeah. better. Because you wrote some manuals already, you'll see them on the side, they're not perfect. And you have to realize that the team that's putting this together, it's a media team, but it's a small media team, while it's trying to cover everything that's going on all over the world. So it's like, so, it's, so we're not, and we're not that good, right? But we, we, we are creating a system that's very open, so better people hopefully can come in and make this work. I mean, we're good enough to know that we need to keep it super open. So this is what we're creating, an open, completely open system for everyone to come in and help define how this thing is going to work. And we're not married to this. If you build a New York City website that deals with that, great, more power to you. We'll give you all the support you want. Because we, don't, we actually don't want to be the guardians of this um, thing, right? We want, it's the same idea as Global Rev. Global Rev always wanted to be copied and involved. We wanted people to start many channels to actually do contextualization. It just proved to be so hard to run even one, but we gave up on that journey because we first, on October 15th, about 200 channels around the world. We got 200 people to start these channels everywhere, right? And then after two months, they're all dead because to run a channel. Yeah, this, like is, this, is actually, this is actually really what I'm, I'm sensing about, um, you know, our fear of centralization. I don't think we need to worry about centralization yet. I mean, let's build one working website that actually gets this no, news we're, out we're to people. we're building the comms now. We're, we're putting it in such okay. a way that it can be copied easily. We, don't, we still don't have a single website that features these stories on a regular basis and gets it out to the public. We've got like Occupy.com, OccupyWallStreet.net. None of them are featuring regular original so content on so a regular focus, world. So focus yeah. on, but you have indie media site, like something like Twin Cities in Media. In, okay, I'll give you a site actually that does this really well. Indie Bay in, in San Francisco. Amazing. Indie site. Bay? Of course. It's, in, it's, it's, it's San Francisco Indie Media. Amazing site. And it has everything. And it's amazing, very good articles mo most of the time. It's, it's open, but it's open publishing, so you can, anyone can publish it. They have no editor. Uh, no, I think they'll bounce your stuff if you cross certain boundaries. Like if you publish something racist, they'll bounce your stuff, I'm sure. Do they have. Okay, I'll have to take a look. You know what I'm saying, right? I'll have like, to take a if look you violate yeah. the principles, yeah. they'll, they'll yeah. bounce your stuff. No, but there are a lot of open publishing. But this is the thing. All right, there's a problem with what you propose. I'll tell you what it is. If we had a central big site, we would spend so much time fighting with each other, which should be on it. That editorial decision will become a political decision. We can avoid that battle 
by decentralizing the publishing and they would just diffuse different links because if it's a wink, it's a wink. So if we, if we build a huge diffusion machine that you just diffuse stories no matter where they published, it kills the reason, like the potential conflict point of how to cover stuff because people are going to start fighting what's going to be on the front page. Sure, but, but the problem with committees and all that stuff is that it, it's, it's a general problem. If you have a group that's forced to make a decision about what to publish, you're gonna introduce politics into the equation. And the politi by politics, I mean people are gonna be fighting for power inside that group on some one sooner or later. And, and that, you know, the committee was in place to converge the big missing that I think he's talking about that's what's missing. But that's so what we're trying to, to come together, bring this sure. to the table, and that's it. We want to create, create some sound bites, go home. That's perfect. But if he creates one site on which we're going to publish everything, and that's going to be this site on which we publish everything, what goes first is going to be contentious. What goes second is going to be contentious. Whether to include this or not include this. Well, this particular writer, he's been known to consolidate power. He's not a friend of the movement, right? Let's block that article. The summit that he's proponing? No, no, we're going to block that summit because he's involved in it. It, it just goes and goes and goes, right? We need to remove a lot of, I'm just giving, I'm making, I'm making fun, I'm making fun of some of the drama that happened at OWS about even this summit. But it does happen all the time, yeah. I got hit twice. But I'm just joking, no, I'm, I'm joking, I'm kind of joking, I'm, I'm half joking about yeah. that stuff, but it can get more serious. We're seeing a much more serious version of it right now in Madrid, where they were like, where staff was operating inside social centers, which had their own separate assemblies, and those assemblies started passing rules of who can and can't be involved, and in in this is trying to take over the movement. Specifically, it was aimed at the media center, because that was like the main way to control the movement. Yeah. And then there was, within the media center, there was a rebellion. Right? It was a total drama, right? And now, like, today, Nikki went to the assembly of Seoul, and the media center people, they say, we're the media center, and she's there, like, no, you're not, because look at the act that you banned this, this, and this, and they're like, ah. Oh. So this is kind of what's going on right Maybe now. Maybe it's the committee, media convergence. That's different. So we, but that's different. We gotta bring to the table. We can have. But they're doing that. He's operation. doing that. They have this. No, but they have this a huge conference call every single, twice a week now, right? Between Mumble and Interoccupy, there's like three conferences a but week. I'm I'm just going I'm just going to the Thursday one person. But the Thursday one is the one that's actually covering all the stuff happening on the country. It seems the most relevant one. Yeah. Yeah. Thursday for Interoccupy. Yeah. It's just a mumble, sir. We can install mumble on your on your phone. Well, that's interoccupy, actually. You it's interoccupy. It's, inter oh, it's, it's interoccupy. So if people phone in, and I'm trying to add uh, Google Hangout not, to it. Oh, it's Google Hangout. It's not. I'm trying to I'm trying to add Google Hangout to it right now. It's 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 interoccupy maestro call. People phone in. Oh, people, actually, you actually physically phone in. Phone in? You can use yeah. The, the advantage is that the only technology you need to, to participate in this call is any phone. Right. So that's that's kind of cool in a way. But on the other hand, it creates this severe limitation in communication that you don't get to see each other's faces. You have to like press one to up twinkle and two, whatever. You know, this this kind of, it's it's very constricted, I think. Which is why I'm trying to get introduce Google uh, Google Hangout so we can have a video chat element. But there's a trade off because then you can't people can't just phone in from regular phones. So we did a lot of but, work connecting these things. Yeah. So like, okay, for example, some something to play around with. I, I want to do it for the summit, but the format was didn't wasn't right like at the end. We, we did this for Agora, but if you have an assembly, actually, of people like, like and I don't, by assembly, I don't mean a decision-making assembly, like in villages, like maybe a group like ours, yeah. having a debate about something, right? And you want to plug in people from outside. So we've developed a whole method where you can use mumble, pads, ch and chat rooms, and facilitators to bring as many people as you want from outside into the debate. Because the facilitator is basically one with the mumble, on the mumble they can hear the debate. So people can actually contribute information to that, or they contribute information to Pat, they contribute information to the chat, or whatever, and then the facilities bring that into the assembly and back. And this is how you plug, you plug in many more people into a, a relatively smaller group, because you're gonna find that once you get to, a, one of the problems we found that once, you are, once our meetings get to more than 40 people, they stop being functional. So in that situation, not everybody can hear each other at the same time, but you have some people who are sort of like, Hearing you, one group of people. Everyone can hear because, like, uh, like yeah. let's say the assembly is held on Mumble, yeah. for example. 
the main thing. So our conversation, which is to be a good mic here, go into mumble, right? And other people can speak back, take their turn and whatever, speak with mumble to the group. So that's one level. But if you want to bring a lot of people, a lot of people can just be watching this on my stream channel and have the pad there, whatever, pull up the pad, and they can just add ideas into the pad. Mm -hmm. And then the, the job of facilitators is to organize those ideas. Pretty much the same job as what people who be running these com up by the comic book would be. Organize all this material and bring it into the, and finally bring the discussion, right? Again, like how to do it, the protocol needs to be, it's not finalized, like we did it a few times with varying degrees of success. Is there a theme on this whole process? There's a document that explains that you put, when you go to the website and you hit on protocol, which is in the very top, the protocol, and we shouldn't call it protocol, it should just be the manual or something like that, or the idea, because it sounds like a protocol. But it explains the process very well. It explains all the elements of the process. But right now we've created the structure, like how the process should work, we've created the groups, now we need to find, we actually need affinity groups to start plugging into the structure to actually make it work. And the reason I said affinity groups is because the tools are there, but like we, people need working, living examples. Like we've used it very well a few times and we see the end results. But the way people really learn is that they see it happening in real time. So if groups are actually using this tool to create media, there will be more people will be able to join in and participate. Because it's very hard for you to, like I, I just spent an hour explaining how all this works to you guys. But if you just came to the site, you wouldn't know. You wouldn't, because you would see the groups and where they are right now after the action ended, after some time had passed. And the, the important thing about these groups is an hour after the action ended, because this is when you s people are writing the story. The result of these things, right? Okay, so some of the tools you guys should definitely avail yourself for all of this stuff. There's this thing called Rebel Mouse. If you go to rebelmouse.com, it's a very powerful aggregator. You've used it already, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't get it yet, but... Uh... Okay, I'll explain <laughs> it. I, actually, I will pull it up since we're here. Okay, so now this is all coming from Twitter now, correct? This is coming from Twitter, but you're picking up on Twitter in real time. Everything that deals with, I don't know more, that's a picture or video in front of you right away. Yeah. It gets updated in real time. How do you edit it? How do you actually make it work, right? Is uh, if you go in, in your account, you go to, let's say, a page, you go to dashboard, you can start looking at feeds. What happens? Let's, let's look at, I don't know more. Now you have to specify all those people to follow, or do those come in automatically from the people you're following on you Twitter follow. already? You can go with account follow, if you want the most curated version of this, or you just go by hashtag. Okay. Right? If you create like how OWS, you're going to get a lot of stuff. But something like I don't know more, it's very useful. But uh, like all the I don't know more videos will basically tag that I don't know more. And they expanded this thing to start to follow. of what's happening right now with the action as it's being reported. Because you can follow the live stream, but live streams are just one part of the story. Because you're gonna get much higher quality from YouTube videos because people are shooting at better cameras, they're not trying to get it out in real time. 
So an hour afterwards, I'll just start uploading the YouTube and start tweeting them out, you will see it. Right? So we're attaching something similar to just post directly to YouTube. We just start to just to, to ex We were having problems with YouTube. We put that in. The problem with YouTube is that so many spammers that try to make money on YouTube, was like they get paid because you. Live, you're talking about. Yeah, but a lot of people who go around bribe are working on the cons. So we're constantly helping people get comfortable with the cons. Now, the big thing about the cons is if you just have the protocol. This will give you the whole manual of how to, like, the, the philosophical idea of how to use this site. It's basically a, big, a very basic manual. It's long, by the way. It's about five pages long. It's been longer. What? It's been longer instructions. It's yeah. very well written, too. 